versus EU. Curse going to be on blue side first, ban first pick. Skarner and Aurelia going to be the first two out of the gate. Curse recognizes how threatening that Skarner can be, and Aurelia has always been a pretty good top laner in her own right. Yeah, and I have to expect that um, we'll see the Jace ban from uh, Fnatic. Okay? I, I don't think that they'll leave it open. Um, we'll see, though. It, you know, it kind of it, it is a team decision whether or not they want to leave it open and think that Curse maybe will take something like Ezreal or mm -hmm. um, Nunu or something like that with the first pick, leave open Jace for Fnatic to take with that second or third, uh, and they can kind of set themselves up. But there's a lot of options right now. Rangar, you know, in particular, has been extremely OP, very difficult to deal with. Um, we've seen Soaz playing, you know, Rangar some uh, recently, but I don't know. We'll, we'll kind of see where they're going. Okay. So uh, Cho'Gath also being banned out here. You know, he's like, hey, we've seen uh, the Edia NA side of Curse has been playing quite a bit of Cho'Gath. So it might, uh, you know, of course, you know, the the, uh, the the champ picks, the training does cross regions sometimes, so might as well play safe. And Lee Sin going to be the last ban from Curse. Very mobile dude in the jungle. Very threatening. And Rengar, of course, the OP. Jace is open. Ezreal's open. Nunu's open. There are yeah. so many first picks here ripe for the taking. Yeah, and I would kind of expect the Ezreal pick, but they have to be looking at the Jace pick right now, and so they do yeah. go ahead and pick up Jace. Uh, that is kind of a concern. If they allow the Jace pick through to Fnatic, Fnatic would gladly take that. But so as he's going to be comfortable playing against that lane, um, you know, we'll, we'll see. They have a couple of options. Again, Lee Sin, he, uh, or Cyanide had been playing a lot of Lee Sin, um, you know, so getting rid of that champ, but he, he has kind of a lot of options right now. But I would probably expect the Ezreal pick and the Zyra pick right now. Uh, that's been a pretty common lane for them, but actually going with the Shen. So, um, He's open. Yeah, you know, they're happy with whatever AD carry they're going to get, and both of those champions are very strong picks, and they have been playing the Zyra bot. It's, it really is an absurdly strong support. Like, I, I would be very surprised if we don't see it played um, at least a couple of times at the Season 2 Championship. Yeah, and it is it is such a huge threat to deal with. And she is surprising. Uh, the, the amount of damage that Zyra support can provide along with that really rough CC to deal with, it's incredibly surprising. You do well, not need a lot of AP on Zyra, on, especially on support, but you'll see them build it anyway. And that's, see, <laughs> that's exactly why she's such a strong support, is yeah. the fact that her base damage and utility is so high that you can play without getting any damage items. And early on in the laning phase, you give yourself a lot of kill potential. Uh, you will be very strong in that regards. But then later in team fights as well, um, you know, the AOE CC and the snare and everything work out particularly well. But Curse, it seems like they're going to be going with kind of a poking, uh, kiting team. So yep. they have a lot of options in team fights. Um, but it might force Fnatic into more of a hard initiation team just to make sure that they don't allow Curse to kite yep. them a little bit. And Fnatic, I mean, they've been playing a lot of Orianna in their own right. So it's more of, you know, not only is she a fantastic chap, you're also taking something away. That's very critical of what Fnatic's trying to do. And, you know, hey, you can't think of a, a better mid laner right now in the meta than Orianna, especially if you have a great jungler to uh, match up with it. Like, Malphite is actually still open here, too. So we can actually see... Uh, Maluno actually running him into jungle too. Yeah, that is a potential. Uh, the only concern is that their lanes are kind of iffy as far as kill lanes. And mm -hmm. Malkai, you really want to get... Did you say Malphite? Malphite, yes. Malphite. Yeah, Malphite would be a strong... I th for some reason, I heard Malkai. Yeah, Malphite would be a very well, we, strong well, pick. Well, Maluno has played a little bit of Malkai too. Yeah, he, he has. I, but Mal you're right. Malphite would be a really strong pick for them. But uh, Fnatic going to go ahead with the Diana. We've seen uh, XPK running Diana. Um, a number of times in the past, it gives them hard initiation, so it, it will hold them in place, you know, so they can set up those combos. Um, but we'll see, you know, how that kind of works. And they, they also they have really great uh, AOE damage from uh, Zyra already, so it, it doesn't really matter that Shen's a little bit light on damage, or you yeah. know, if it, that Diana is more single target oriented because of the AOE that they already have. Ooh, this could be interesting. And we've seen we've seen Curse really favor the Sona Ezreal lane, but Xin Zhao in the jungle. I mean, that, I mean, one, yeah, that synergize is very well with Orianna, plus you have all the extra CC coming in, too, with the pop-up. This could be really interesting here from Curse, and that's something, uh, something you don't see all too often. Yeah, it's interesting that Xin Xiao hasn't really got in, hasn't really come into full, like, popular, popularity. People haven't yeah. been playing a lot. He kind of, when he was buffed, people started playing him a little bit. I was actually talking with someone, uh, having a conversation with someone that they were basically saying that M5 is going to play Xin Xiao the entire uh, Season 2 championship. That, um, you I'm know, okay Darian, with that. <laughs> Darian in the top lane, it's, you know, the kind of champion that he would like, and I, I definitely understand that. Um, but, you know, we'll, we'll see how he does in the jungle. He... 
does have a lot of strengths. He's very strong at ganks. He's uh, very beefy. Once he gets some damage, he's just ridiculously strong. Mm. Um, but, you know, he can kind of counter snowball or anti snowball, where if you fall behind, uh, it's kind of difficult to come back as in jail. You just keep on falling further and further behind. Yep. But I can see where that ult is going to be a huge, huge utility uh, going into the later team fights. Because you see, you know, it's, it's a very big. Uh, a very big swarm oh, that Fnatic... Hopefully he doesn't knock him out of Orianna's ult. That would be true, though. That Well, well, here's the thing, too, is that you usually, uh, you know, when you have teams like this who will, or, who will tend to, like, swarm one champ, like, Janna is usually, like, the go-to support yeah. for that. You know, you have the ult, blow everyone back. But, I mean, Sona, you still have the initiation properties, but Zin in the middle, in the midst of all this chaos, if you don't have that Orianna ult, or if you just desperately want to save someone, because you're going to have Diana and Shen and Udyr all zooming in, trying to focus one person down. And Diana is very mobile. Shen, he can come up with that taunt. Just to get, like, hit Diana once, ult, she's isolated, take her out, start to fight over. Reset. Yeah, that's actually a really good point, how Zin Xiao, he can kind of shut down Diana in those fights, just because of how much damage and, you know, everything he's just going to be doing to her, and mm. then, like you said, the ultimate. But, um... I don't know, we'll see. I think Zyra will kind of help them against Xin Zhao a little bit because they can kite with Zyra or they can pick him off and he's just not going to be squishy enough in those early exchanges. And then there's also the fact to, to consider that Cyanide, he's going to be running Udyr in the jungle and that jungling speed, Ooh. it should allow him to kind of counter out Maluno a little bit. Um, you know, just steal some of his jungler or whatnot. Yeah. Xin Zhao's a pretty fast jungler. Um, you know, he's pretty good at counter jungling also could be, uh, because of his uh, speed with clearing buffs and that single target DPS. But because of the uh, AoE that Udyr has, he's just a little bit faster. So we'll, we'll see how that kind of factors in. And they, they do have a little bit more map control than Curse does. Uh, having both the Shen pick, but then also Diana, who can kind of roam a little bit, be a little bit more mobile, try and pick up kills. Diana with the Shen combo, that's going to be pretty dangerous yeah. for Curse. And so Diana, um, you know, XPK, he could be very aggressive against Extinct in that mid lane, uh, you know, go tower dive or something and have the Shen follow up. Yeah, Maluno going uh, 0 21 9 with the Zin. And uh, Diana here, XPK 9 12 9. I actually, I actually like this setup a lot. Just a little bit of everything. You don't need to go too far in to really any tree. You just need a little bit of everything. Just so that when you're in the middle of these team fights, you don't immediately fall down. Let's take a look at two. At, and, uh, and that's a really common setup that we're seeing more and more now. Or it's, yeah. it's not common, but it's it's coming into uh, popularity. It's becoming common. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's just get a little mix of everything. Yep. I also like the Zyra stuff, too, because you're going to need all that extra cooldown to get that harass in. I'm wondering, I'm, I'm a little curious as to why you don't have a little bit more into the Intelligence Mastery, but it's still, it's fine. You got plenty of 6% cooldown. In addition to everything, is not too shabby. Okay, yeah, that is too. actually. Oh no, this is N rated. So yep. yeah, that's that makes a little bit more sense. Um, I, I thought it was a. Uh, eight, I thought it was XPK for a second. I was very <laughs> confused because it wouldn't make much sense to not be running the cooldown reduction instead be running the gold. It would be an interesting new strategy. Yeah. But yeah, that's 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 pretty common. And so N rated, you know, he, he wants to get level two in particular. Um, they're on the purple side, so they have to kind of make up for the fact that blue side is going to have an early advantage. But we'll see kind of how they do that. They could try and steal the blue wraith over the wall. That's actually pretty easy for Zyra. You just uh, throw your snare over the wall, you get vision of the blue wraith, and you kill it very quickly. And that would actually put them slightly ahead in the bot lane. Yep. And also, uh, I want to go back a little bit, too, because uh, Fnatic and Curse, they've actually matched up against each other quite a bit fairly recently yeah. in other tournaments and uh the results have actually been kind of mixed uh the most recent the fight for pride tournament fanatic not only be, you know they beat curse in winners finals and grand finals both games 2-1 however the step before that empire tv curse actually took fanatic out in a quick 2-0 mm. so this is this is a, a very contested set we have here it could actually go either way and these are two teams that have actually played uh, against each other quite a bit fairly recently so now you're seeing a few more tricks come in i.e the zin in the jungle so we'll see how that works here and we've also seen a lot of uh varied play uh in the past also i believe we had a curse you uh in the empire tournament actually plays zillion uh we've seen uh, quite a bit of oriana play from both teams which would exp uh, more and more fanatic than curse but that would explain curse trying to take the oriana out from under them quite a bit of blitzcrank play from Fnatic also, so we may actually be seeing that later on in the set. 
Yeah, that, that kind of goes along with N-Rated's play style. He goes for those really aggressive supports. Mm -hmm. But uh, Zyra is clearly their favorite support at this point in time. Yes. And she's just very strong. Uh, will work very well with Sivir. So Sivir kind of works out to counter off the Ezreal Sona lane since it's such a, an aggressive lane. Um, you know, Sivir will have the spell shield to kind of help out a little bit. And then there's, they're going to have plenty of burst damage. Yep. If N-Rated is able to hit a snare on someone, uh, Sona in particular, Sona is basically going to die. Ezreal is going to be a little bit more difficult because of his mobility. Um, so he should be pretty safe. But Sivir will be able to farm for the most part, has really strong burst damage for Harass, but then also has you know gr good pushing and gives the team a little bit more kiting or initiation, which is actually something they really needed uh, yeah. going up against this team. We talked about how Curse has this kind of kiting team that they're going to try and you know poke them down and um, I don't know, extend the fight. Sivir will allow them to get that hard engage that they're looking for. Yep. And uh, we actually seen uh, Fnatic pair up the Sivir quite a bit with the uh, Deteric in the past, though, but uh, that's also because the Zyra was not available to him. So... In the, in the few, if uh, if this game works out really well, if Enri gets really everything he's looking for, the Zyra gets banned out, Fnatic, they still have plenty of other support options to go off in the future. And we've actually been seeing quite a bit of uh, Sivir, not only you know, in the EU, but just really all over, actually. It's been kind of refreshing. Yeah, no, she, she kind of moves in and out of uh, play and viability or whatnot. Um, you know, we had seen a while ago MTW had played her, and they looked really strong at the time when they were playing her, before they were Mono Ferris, and actually when Atlanta was still on the team. But then also uh, CLG, they've been playing her some, and you know, she, she does have a number of strengths. She's a very safe bot lane while still having very aggressive harass, but then she also has fantastic pushing potential. Um, that pushing potential, you know, really works out uh, yep. well in a lot of situations. Here we are, game number one, Fnatic going for a pretty aggressive invade stage. Scaring off the Ezreal. Creatine will have to stick back just for a second, but it's getting vision of the entire team. Three members of Curse for the scouting squad. Nice orb right there in the bush just to make sure no one is in there. But Ping's going down over on a tri ramp from Fnatic. They know something is probably up. And indeed they are right. You got three members of Curse here in the top tri brush. But Fnatic moving as a full five. Are they going to go for the blue or are they going to double back? They are going to. No, not quite sure yet. Yeah, I think they're going for the blues, so they're going to be able to take that. But, you know, we'll see what they lose. If anyone from Curse walks into them, that would be devastating. But Curse, they're going to be safe in the bottom lane. They're going to be able to get their mini golems uncontested. So that's actually going to result in a nice little gold and uh, experience advantage, particularly if, um, you know, they, if Candy Panda and N Rated aren't able to get back into the bottom lane in time. If they don't recall soon enough, uh, you know, they might miss out on a couple of minions and Curse could get an advantage. And Creaton right now, he's just watching out for a bit. He wants to yeah. make sure they don't steal their red uh, the right while they're countering. So that'll be nice for them. And, you know, usually sometimes if you see the entire team move on in, you'll see the support leave a ward in behind. But, you know, you're still here. You're going to be taking the small golems anyway. You might as well, you know, be a Teemo, be a ward. Sit there for a second. But Fnatic, though, they're going to steal, uh, looking to steal this blue. But there's going to be uh, there's going to be a red missing when they return. So mutual steals. It's going to be very interesting for the both of the junglers. So we're going to have a, a double blue, more than likely on Udir, and a double red on Zin. But uh, Zindo, that's going to be pretty dangerous for Zin to you know, have complete control over the red buffs for the first few minutes of the games because those ganks get ridiculous. Yeah, Zin could actually go for a level two gank, and so right off the bat, Cyanide, because he saw them, he goes up to the top to watch out. No. He will catch out Angus, but they have to deal with Maluno as well. And with the red buff, he's going to deal a lot of damage. But the Shen Taunt, they burst him actually pretty quickly. He's getting really low. He has to flash over the wall as they turn onto Jace, and a really quick early advantage for Fnatic. Both flashes burned for the top laner and the jungle on Curse. No deaths, though, but still it's going to hurt just a little bit more. Oh, great sidestepping wow. from Candy Panda. He gets off the attacks on Creaton and then dodges the Mystic Shot while still hitting his Boomerang Blade. Fancy, fancy footwork coming in bot lane. Always a treat to see that. So as going to be looking to push up here, has the nice level lead up over the Jace for a time being. And he may actually get a second level boom shifting out of the second hit of the Boomerang Blade. Candy Panda is also a little low. So both of those ADs, they are hungry. They are looking for blood here early yeah. on in this game. And Sona's harass is really putting Candy Pan at a slight disadvantage, Oof. even though he's doing really well against Creaton, mm -hmm. uh, b just because Zyra doesn't have a heal, so Sona can slowly win that lane. So Super Ace has done a really nice job making sure he exchanges harass with Sivir whenever Creaton's got kind of getting picked off. 
Um, so, you know, that, that's kind of an interesting mechanic, dynamic there. But I, again, I just want to go back. I really love how Cyanide, early on, he, he recognized that they had stolen the red, which meant that Zin was in a perfect position for a quick level two aggressive gank. And he just went up top to, you know, counter that out. It was a really nice play. Yep. Also, uh, Candy Panda, really good on those spell shields early on to try and uh, mitigate some of the harass coming in from Sona. Malunu getting pretty low, trying to take those small golems. He does have to back. He's still level two. He's slightly behind in the jungle. Cyanide actually doing pretty well for himself. Got his second blue buff, topped himself off, is level three. So in the jungle, Malunu is a little bit behind, but yeah. nothing nothing impossible. Zin's relatively speedy. Creatin getting rooted by the Zyra double Plants are up. You got both of those seedlings doing quite a bit of damage. Candy Panda looking for that la looking for that boomerang. If you get a little bit of luck on that thing, it could actually get the kill on the way back. Yeah, and, and even if they're not getting the kill on Creaton, it's putting him on the defensive, which will result in a couple of things. One, it might result in lower farm for him, so that would be a win for uh, Fnatic. But it also prevents them from being as aggressive as they want to be on Sivir, so that's going to allow Candy Panda to farm a little bit more safely. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but, so it's it, it's definitely a nice play so far, but I, I'm kind of curious to see how Maluno is going to progress as a jungler uh, in the jungle, because Zin, he can be kind of slow in the jungle, get kind of low. Yeah. Uh, and that's kind of where the, the anti, um, you know, snowballing comes in. If you fall behind, on Zen and you can't clear the jungle as fast as you would like it be, it can be kind of difficult right he's not too far behind just yet one gank no, first yeah, blood definitely can definitely cure that but if he doesn't get those ganks oh, he Zin get is Zoom. coming mid though Diana I think she's caught out he gets one, the dive he has two, the red attack can he get three, the pop-up just get the, barely not enough damage the ignite does go down anyway XPK low on health and mana he's gonna be forced to back pretty oh but soon. Jace is completely Ooh. screwed cyanide he has him in the opposite base he has no escape route Diana can't really help on this though that's the thing and, and they know Zin they know Maluna is actually pretty close by they may actually get out of here wow really nice job by yeah. Maluno uh, coming up so they kind of scare off Udir, even though it was a, a 2v1 up top and he yeah. was stuck in the enemy jungle. If XPK had a little bit more health, a little bit more mana, that could have ended very differently. Yeah. But yeah, actually, the ward coverage, though, I mean, they know Moon is still here. They could have been a very bad situation. And if, uh, they, if the ward coverage actually was not there on the tri ramp, that could have actually resulted in a kill for Curse. But uh, they did double back. They will be fine. Candy Panda now on the end of a little bit of harassment from creating the boomerang. One hit. Every single time that thing comes out, it's like, oh, well, hit both times. It's it, that thing is it, that thing is deceptively damaging. And they've been playing the bot lane very well so far. But this is where the Sona harass starts to kick in. Udir is up top though, coming in an Angish, the knockback. He should be able to get out of there, but he's really close to the taunt. Oh! So as will hit it. So he, I don't think he's going to go down, but he's going to take a lot of damage. He's very close to dropping actually, yeah. but uh, is going to be able to get out of there. But the bot lane, that's just the slow heal from Soro Sona and the harass eventually taking over. Uh, but I, I think Sivir. Candy Panda, yeah, he is actually going to get back in time to not miss out on any of the CS in the bot lane. Yep. Super Ace, though, is low on mana. Cannot do uh, the harass as much as he'd like to. And also did go boots first. So he's going to have to go back, get a little bit of mana, possibly get that fairy charm start up on that Philo yep. stone to keep that harass up. And the boots are half the reason why he's been so strong in lane, why he's been able to harass Candy Panda so effectively, because he can move in and out a little bit more freely. Mm -hmm. It does slow him down a little bit on his uh, GP10s, but you know, it's it was kind of the decision that he needed to be able to harass Sever a little bit. Not really uh, that big of a concern that he's falling behind. That really any behind in gold. It's really a minuscule amount, but um, we'll see. Now that he has, uh, did he get, yeah, he got a ruby crystal. So uh, with the ruby crystal, both of those supports can be a little more aggressive. So as taking a little bit of damage from the Jace is ignited. We'll have to back off for a second and go back. And now I want to I wanna make a note here, actually from both of the ADs, not only did both of them start off with summoner heal, both of them on their back, they got the, uh, the Doors Blade and Ninja Tabby, both of them. And we're actually, we're starting to see ADs, especially like with their boots pick a defensive boot rather than go for the, the usual fare of the uh, the Berserker's Greaves. Why is that? Well, for someone like Ezreal, a lot of times it's because you want to exchange harass very effectively. So you're going to take minion damage, but also you want to be able to win harass exchanges. And so it, it really is a very strong item in the uh, laning phase in particular. Come team fights, it's a little bit weaker. Uh, as far as Ninja Tabby is concerned, something like Merc Treads or something would be a little bit stronger to get that CC reduction. But mm -hmm. um, it really is, it's purely for lane harass. And we've been seeing both of them ha uh, exchanging a lot of lane harass. Ezreal, you know, he's going to take a lot of burst damage from Sivir, so he doesn't really want to... Um, 
go down too quickly. And Candy Panda, he kind of just wants to farm for a bit. It also kind of goes with the mentality that uh, a lot of AD carries now, they're kind of secondary to their team. Late in the game, AD carries easily, you know, control the game. They just have so much damage output. But through the early portions of the game, it's mostly uh, the top and mid that are, or mid in particular, that are winning you the game and winning you the team fights. So the AD carry, you just want to be safe. You want to be able to farm into that late game. And nothing's saying that, you know, later on, once you start uh, getting into mid game, you just sell the boots. Yeah, buy the course. ones you really want. Super Ace coming out in, getting harassed. Flash, flash, need to get out of there. Super Ace is not 60. It does not have the old Creighton, is trapped in oh, the wall. Barely the, over Knight the wall. will not get him, but Zyra cannot make him up with the Q either. You got He's to turn got him. Nice root right over the forest wall. First blood going to be going to end rated. Nice kill. Nice predictive shot on that root. And uh, XPK actually came down as well just to counter off Orianna, not allow Extinct uh, to come and you know surround them or anything. But they're going to be able to move in on the dragon. Oh. As a result, it does reset. <laughs> but uh, that's kind of surprising. Very rarely do you see the dragon reset. Yeah. It is really annoying when it does happen, though. But they will be able to take that fairly quickly. Sona is peeking up, but she's not going to really be able to do anything. Yeah. Ward into Tri Brush, too. Fnatic knows she's coming. So uh, if she does decide to peek, get a little bit more cur curious, they could have gotten the kill. But no, even with the dragon reset, though, Fnatic does secure it a little bit extra gold on them and is still getting more harass down to soaz but soaz is tanking up actually got the uh going straight away for the giant's belt first gonna need that health just to stay in lane a little while longer yeah so top lane is pretty even so far um you know jc does have really nice harass but it's it's not really enough to bully around shen that much though shen he isn't going to want to stay in the melee uh, just because when jace switches to melee form his damage output is so high so he, he kind of wants to play a little bit defensively but uh we'll see once soaz actually gets you know like a war mogs or uh, some fire cape potentially yeah um he's just going to have so much hp that uh, it will be kind of difficult for Jace to wear him down, even though that uh, the hammer, it does scale on HP, so he could do some quick burst damage, but it'll probably just be a farm lane for the most part up there, and most of the aggression is going to be focused on the other lanes. Yep, and I can imagine that will be, you know, more than anything like Sunfire Cape, because not only you get the health, scales, uh, scales on Shen anyway, you get the armor, always good against someone, especially Jace. And you get the pushing. And you get the pushing. There you go. And then you get the money. And then you get the money. And then you get... The women. Yes. Uh, but the, <laughs> yeah, the the concern with the pushing in particular is he's going up against Jace, who's one of the best pushers in the game. Right. If he ever leaves then uh, the lane, like he ults or anything like that, Jace is going to easily be able to take the tur turret in that time. Uh, and then he also has to worry about the AOE clearing. So Jace, he doesn't necessarily have to tr exchange with Shen. He can just right. sit back, constantly clear the minion ways, and push Shen up to his tower. Yep. And then if anything, if anything does indeed go wrong in mid or bot, which bot is extremely volatile right now yeah you one of the best things you can do against a top lane shen is actually force him to leave force him to ult force him to go elsewhere Ooh, diane, uh, diane is actually ass. coming down but will engage on extinct here there there's the is. shen ultimate if they get the next dash he does time it perfectly oh. the flash from extinct just Very barely well there so really nice play from both sides xpk when you hit the q you get the reset yes but he was holding his ult uh, the second ult until the very last second so he wouldn't give enough time for the flash but extinct just timed it perfectly wonderful wonderful timing on that gets right back within tower range, and that is time killed for Soaz. Angus did not actually go all out on that push, but it's still free farming time for a Jace, which is never good. You never want that, and, and Angus is actually freezing the lane. Hammer swing right into the forest wall, but you will be fine. Shen's pretty tanky enough. Candy Panda and Creatin, though, they're here in the bot lane. They're both at half health. Things could get a little hairy down there in just a second if the jungle support is there. Baluna, we haven't been seeing a whole lot of him lately, but now he's getting aggressive. Now he wants to be involved here. You see him actually on the back end on mid, waiting to see if Diane's actually going to go for that engage. Creating getting rooted once again. Free boomerang blade. And that's the thing, too, is that one of the best supports to pair up with uh, with uh, Sivir is Tarek. But Zyra, with that root, performs the exact same function. Anguish here in the top lane, getting the hammer pushing Udir back, trying to crack that turtle shell, and here comes Malunu. Is he going to come up and around? Meanwhile, bot lane going to rewind real quick to see that kill from Zyra down onto Ezreal. And it's just the quick burst that Zyra has. I'm assuming he landed the snare, and then Candy Panda just had the follow-up. Oh. Uh, they're able to pick that up pretty quickly, actually. With the auto attacks, they grab that kill. And it, it really is a really devastating lane. Uh, in the meantime, Extinct actually takes down XPK. Um, so a couple of exchanges going on here. And Oriana is such a strong laner. Uh, she does have an advantage over someone like Diana. She can just constantly harass him down. But I think it's interesting that... Uh, 
Sorry, I lost my thought. I, I think it's interesting that Maluna is actually going with gold pretends, which a lot of times in the past you would see more offensive um, yeah. items on Zinn. But I actually really like this decision because one of the issues that Zinn's always had is if you're going with those offensive AD items in order to clear the jungle, you're not tanky enough in the fights. Going for the gold pretends, he's going to get the heart of gold. He'll be a little bit tankier. He's going to have a little bit more gold. And Zinn already has such a high base damage that yep. he's not going to have to worry about clearing the jungle. He's going to be fine at this point in time. But for the most part, he sat back, hasn't ganked that much because he knows he wants to get off to a good start in the jungle to make sure he can solidify himself in this game. And you also saw in Champ Select, uh, Maluna actually went 0, uh, zero 21 9. So he's looking to build defensive anyway. You get that heart of gold, you can get that, uh, you can go into, build into the Randuin's Omen. He's going to be uh, a pretty, pretty solid as a rock once we start heading into mid game and uh, maybe even into late game if the game ever gets to that point. XPK wandering down though. Creation is a little bit uh, a little bit too far out. There is no ward in the tri brush. You're not going to know Diana's here until it's too late. Is he going to step out a little bit too yeah, far? I, Oriana, it seems, started to move down. So I think they kind of had an understanding that Diana wasn't there. But Extinct, yeah. he was actually able to take the race. Uh, and so he's going to get a little bit of a farm advantage over Diana while Diana's out of lane. He's already 40 CS ahead, um, even though XPK has you know done a pretty nice job farming. So that's a huge farm advantage. And Oriana is one of the best farmers in the game. Yes, yeah, actually, we'll take a look at the farm right now. 141 to 104. There you go. 40 creeps ahead. Plus, you have the kill, which is another equivalent 20 creeps. So it's about a 60 creep farm lead that Oriana actually over ha has over Diana and shows in the money, too. About 700 gold difference between the two. So has taken some some decent amount of damage up there in top lane. And he also uh, knows here, too, Diana working for that early Athenes. Fantastic item on Ori. Diana, on the other hand, you got a whole bunch of rings and you got a raw, you got, and you got a wand. We'll have to see what that gets built into later on. Possibly, maybe an abyssal, something, uh, something along those lines. Yeah, no, that's uh, that will definitely be pretty strong. Um, he, uh, Diana's going to want the tankiness, going to want to have that hard engage. So we'll we'll kind of see where they go from there. So far, the bot lane's been working out pretty nice uh, for them. You know, both of the 80s are pretty even. But, uh, dead they're getting, even. <laughs> yeah, they're getting super farmed, so that's the key. Maluno with the oracles clearing out the coverage. Good purchase on his part, clearing out the ward in the tri brush, and now he's getting aggressive. Nice call from Enraid, putting the seed in the brush. You need that vision because there's a man with a spear. He's got your name on it. Wants to make sure to keep him back. No date tonight. We'll have to hold off for another time. And I think both teams are comfortable with playing kind of defensively right now. I think for Fnatic, for the most part, they're going to want to be a little bit more aggressive than Curse at this point. But Curse, they want to hold ball, uh, back to get Zinn in the game. They need Maluno to really get a lot of farm in order for Zinn to be viable a little bit later on. So both junglers are going for the Oracles. On Curse's side, it's to be a little bit more defensive. Uh, on Fnatic's side, it's so that they can get off those aggressive ganks. But... Um, I don't know, we'll see how they try and pressure them. They are to that point in the game where XPK could oh. try for some uh, early aggression. And recognizing that Zinn's pretty close, Udir comes on in, looking for the stun, we will have to settle for the Sivir. Boom, right on the tail end. When you hit the boomerang right at the end, both hits proc, and that is quite a bit of damage. Super A's, he's gonna need a Band-Aid on that one. XPK does get pushed out, a little bit of harass coming from Oriana. Farm is still massively in the Ori's favor. Mudir going to back off, but Mudir is going to stay here on this one. He's going for the charge. Can he get it? No. Ult from Sivir. Just the little bit of extra speed boost that be, speed bus, uh, buff that you need just to get closer to that tower and keep away from the man with the spear. Really nice conservative play from both uh, Candy Panda and N Rated. So they probably could have picked up the kill on Sona if uh, N Rated had used his ultimate, but he decided to hold on to it. They were already getting a nice little harass advantage, Maluno. so they're able to force him back. Oh, oh, almost getting the pullback. The quick flash from Maluno, otherwise yeah. he would have been uh, knocked into the Udir. Extinct is not the only one who's been practicing his flashes. And you're still looking to 1v1. Oh, so is so going is. To win this. He uh, coming on in with the taunt. Ignite going down, also drinking the health potion as he goes, forcing the Jason back that's okay fanatic now looking for their next dragon dashing on nxp game wants the kill does get it real quick on it to extinct but the dragon is still attacking you still need to finish that still something on your to-do list need to finish it creates looking for the snipe something anything can he get the steal no he cannot Diana will secure it for Fnatic. So Dragon number two. Coming up with the Sona ult. Can you burst down Zyra? Yes, you can. Coming up with the passive. Will not connect. Oh, but Diana's coming around from the backside. Oh, they be got bad. the kill, but it might have put them in a dangerous situation. XPK looking for the Crescent. Coming on in. Dashing on in. Stealing it straight out. 
from underneath the rest of his team. Here comes Shannon with the ult. Also, there is the Ignite. Green, and will he go down? Yes, he will. Double kill for Diana. Baludo in trouble. Losing that Oracles will go down also. But Angish just looking to keep Fnatic away from the tower with those shots. But I don't think it's going to be enough. Three kills plus Dragon for Fnatic. And they've also managed to kill out an Oracles. That was an amazing series of events. Yeah, that was a brutal fight for Curse. So Fnatic taking a commanding lead there. It was kind of interesting. It looked like it originally it was a mistake for, by N-rated. Soaz is actually really close to going down. They <laughs> will be able to pick him up. I think Angus, one more attack. If he can get the J shot, he will be nice. able to pick up the kill. Uh, so nice job by Angus. Yeah. But it seemed like N-rated, he was maybe you know getting caught out because it is kind of a bottleneck. Whenever you're going around the turn, his team was on the left side of the, uh, the wall and he was on the right side. So when he went around the turn, it kind of forces him closer to his opponents, but then XPK was ready for it. He was already on his way down. Mm -hmm. He had enough closing distance. Uh, so I don't know if that was kind of intentional or not, but it worked out for Fnatic's favor. Yep. Maluno did not rebuy the Oracles, so there's going to be a little less vision for Curse over the next few minutes until it does get rebought, or at the very least... Well, he can't afford to rebuy the Oracles right. at this point. I mean, even if he has the gold, it would just be such a risky buy for him because he's going to be too weak. He actually picked up a Doran shield just to be a little bit more tanky in these fights. And that's a late shield to Super Ray's face checking that bush. You have found a wild Diana looking to get some damage though. Here's Maluno getting the pop up, but it's not going to be enough in mid air. Diana still somehow manages to get that kill. But actually oh, has a long- a dangerous situation too. To go, Zyra ult inside the Triburge. Angish is going to get caught behind Candyman. No, does get the kill. Onto Jace flashing over into the Dragon Pit. Maluno is still desperately grabbing at strings, trying to get something, anything on XPK. Can he get the third hit? No. Cannot get the pop-up. Took too long to try and get it. Really nice job by Fnatic. They're using their mobility and moving around oh. as a team to pick up these kills. The Ezreal is not going to hit. No, it will not, not. Just taking a random guess, not quite sure where he is. He was close, though. I mean, yeah, he was close. Was, I mean, it was close in the general sense that, right. like, Paraguay is close to, <laughs> you know, Ecuador or something like that. But well, you've got two choices, though. It's either the Tri Brush or the Blue Brush. And it's you have to pick one. It's, it's, you flip a coin. Yeah. No, he did, he did flip a coin. <laughs> but um, unfortunately, it wasn't a double set. Uh, yeah, it was, it was, Creatin was using. Uh, the uh, the uh, the new iOS 6 maps to try and find server. That's what it was. Oh yeah, well that that actually yeah that would be an issue. That actually that would be an issue. You get get off that iPhone, Siri, man. Siri, uh, can you help me find Siver there? The Pulse fire as well. It's Siri. Now we know. Right. Now we That's know. Right. <laughs> uh, well, you know he doesn't need a map, but I, I well, guess it's also it's, it's kind of like Luke using the Force. He, he didn't of. need a map, but he used one anyway, and it, it screwed him over. He missed there, the shot. But, That's what um, happens. We'll it's... see. We'll see how they kind of progress here. <laughs> Maluno getting kind of low. He, you know, he's he is a little bit behind right now, and the oracles in particular are kind of set up behind on gold, and really that's that's dangerous on Zin. But Jace coming down. Angus, wow. he's been roaming for a bit. I think with the ignite, the red buff, he's gonna oh, have it. But the Shen ultimate. Nice no. timing on that Shen ult. You know, so as was just Wait, watching it tick Ezreal, down. Oh, can this he get one's it this gonna side. hit. He has it. He has the Ezreal Wait, ult. Two. It's done. Oh, oh from downtown. You had to move. Oh, man. End rated. I, was, you I had to see to, if it would just barely get he, the teleport if off. He, just, he actually may have been able to back in time, but no. You had to stick around. You had to move. You had to pick up that penny. Sorry. You're going down. And that one created very well done there from the top lane. Candy Panda, though, looking for some rest down to Maluto, and that boomerang blade is still quite the damaging thing with Angus and Extinct here in the mid looking to push the wave. They want that tier one tower while they can still get a four man push here. He's in still down and bot lane. Can they grab it from a distance? I think they will. They're a little bit extra uh, global gold for all of Curse. They are still at a little bit more than a 2k deficit here though. Yeah, they are a little bit behind, and also, um, you know, some of the champions that they have, they can hold off pretty effectively with Orianna and Ezreal, but with Zinn, they can't afford to be behind. So he, he they're actually split pushing him right now. Mm -hmm. uh, Curse, he can't stick with the team, or Maluno, he can't stick with the team because he's just going to be too weak. So getting the side farm is really going to help him out, help him get back into this game. The rest of the champions are strong enough that they can really stall very effectively. They can clear creep waves, they can win fights and play defensively. Um, so the key is for Fnatic right now to try and push their. Uh, Victor or push their lead into a victory. They need to figure out what advantages they can take, what uh, objectives they can take in order to pressure Curse to force a fight where Curse is going to be at a disadvantage. If you take a look at the items here, also on Fnatic, you got the tr you got the uh, triple GP10s 
on it to Zyra. You got the IE plus the Vamp Scepter for the Sivir. Diana did finish the Abyssal. A little bit more extra damage plus the lucky pick. DFG going to follow up on that one. You got Adir too. He's building a little bit for the team. He's got his GP tents. He's got the uh, he's got the Aegis also. And Shen, he did indeed buy that Sunfire Cape. He wants that. He wants to be able to stay in those fights and also get his push on while he's at it. Bot tier one, Candy Panda with the pressure going to grab that and Angus once again with the hammer down on it to the ninja. But here comes XPK and that is Jace's time to run the other way. Can he get out of this? I'm not sure if he can. He's caught between a ninja and Lady Gaga. I, I think he's less excited about getting out and more excited about maybe getting a kill, but he's putting himself in a dangerous Ooh, shot. The hit, he doesn't get it. There you go. XPK picks it up, so he wanted to get back in there. He almost took down Soaz. He didn't actually realize that XPK was there uh, until a little bit too late, but yeah. um, this is actually opening up an opportunity for Curse to take the dragon. They have they to take Diana's up top. Uh, Shen, he's a little bit too low. He does have his teleport up in a couple of seconds, so Curse has to assume that it's up at this point in yeah. time, but he was low, so he had to go back. It was a perfect opportunity for them. That was the only opportunity for him, and they got oh, it. Oh, right. Any, any few more seconds, Diana would have actually traveled all the way down and has returned to mid lane, getting a little bit of damage done to Extinct, too. But you'll notice, too, despite the the massive farm advantage that Oriana has, you do have quite a few kills on the XPK, an excessive amount of kills, and a little bit more tankier, too, than the opposing AP. But you look, you got the Oriana orb. It's not going to be enough mid-tier one. Now goes down Fnatic, grabbing that one. The towers are now even, but the gold does play a different story. Now 4K lead for Fnatic. Yeah, and they kind of want to push this tower still, but they have to worry about the fact that Jace is here, so he can clear very easily. Oh, no. Zin actually going in for it. XPK is very low, gets the flash out of the Zyra ultimate, and Zyra is going to be able to turn this around for them. But Angus, he jumps in once again, and Fnatic's actually in a good situation, except that Creaton comes around the backside, picks up XPK, but they will be able to have Soez in the front line. They just need to get out of there, though. This is a losing fight for Fnatic right now. Soez flashing over the wall, Maluna is still in retreat. Creaton right there on the trainer, but will get caught up yep, by the toy from the retreating ninja curse losing this fight 2-1 and you saw the zyra ult she got everything on that one sona ult cannot stay the same and when you have massive ults like that for the initiation when you want to counter initiate those ults can play the difference in those fights and that's exactly what happened there just sona completely whiffed zyra got everything yeah, and the key for Fnatic is keeping their tanks in the front line because Udyr and Shen, they are very strong at this stage in the game. They will fall off a little bit as far as damage is concerned. Um, they're just going to be kind of tanky bodies from mm -hmm. this point on. So, you know, they need to be able to keep Diana and Sivir in particular alive. Uh, but they will be able to win these kind of mid-game fights um, just because of how tanky they are. So yep. um, we'll, we'll kind of see how that factors in. Uh, you know, Cyanide in particular, he has a ton of armor. You know, Shen is really beefy. But um, yep. I don't know, we'll, we'll kind of see how they go. Ezreal, he does have a Triforce and a BF Sword, so he's, his damage output is phenomenal at this point. Uh, you know, a little bit outpacing Sivir some, even though Sivir has a slight gold advantage. I also got to say, too, that uh, right now Cyanide is actually zooming ahead, leaps and bounds over the Xin Zhao. It's, yeah. it's huge. It is a huge difference, about 1,500 gold separating the two junglers, two levels separating the two junglers and you see right there you know how effective each of them are in these fights i mean Uther is right there in the middle trying to control everything you got maluno not as strong trying to initiate and granted yeah you got the pop up on diana but you didn't get the rest of your team to follow up on that kill oh jace is trying to get an engage though he's coming in really quickly he's going to be able to get on xpk and nice. flash to knock him back into maluno very the well perfect done pick up but Zyra trying to turn it around. Can't quite get the engage that they need to. Awesome play by Curse. Yeah, so you got uh, Jace actually learning a little bit from uh, Lee Sid. There's a you know, flash yeah. kick, flash hammer. Same exact thing, same exact deal. And you saw how wonderfully that worked. But this is a problem, though. You do have Soez, and this is, the, uh, this is always the threat. Always a threat when you're running with Shen. The split push possibilities. And Rita gets caught out a little bit too far in the mid. Still waiting on that passive. See if he's going to be using on the completely misses. No, so Sivir's on your team there, bud. Candy Panda throwing up the shield. The orb is a bit too much to handle. And now Curse, I mean, they're they're still they're still strong. They're not out of this one yet, as you've seen there. Their pickoff potential, if given the opportunity, is still strong. 
Yeah, but Chen trying to take down Inga, she's going to be able to get out of there. It is interesting, though. Both teams have really nice kiting potential and also uh, kind of poking potential with Zyra versus Orianna in particular, even though Zyra's the support. Um, that's kind of the, the game matchup that they're looking for. But it's interesting because Curse actually has a little bit more mobility than Fnatic does with the Jace, since it's, uh, as opposed to Sivir's ultimate, which is great, it's tied to her ultimate. Jace's is tied to a common ability, which allows them to kind of move in and out of fights a little bit more easily. They get to pick and choose their fights like the previous one. So so at Fnatic, they didn't feel like they were out of place, but just barely, Jace was able to get his team in range and uh, pick up the kill. Maluno's catching up. He's do he's doing he's doing his thing. He's doing what he can, and the gold disparity is not it's it's still there. It's still there. He's still about 1,500 behind. But as you saw, that he can still be a huge presence in those fights. He got the CC. He got everything he needed. But uh, doing 1v1 versus a Soaz, who's four levels ahead of you. That I wouldn't recommend, but you do have Jace quickly approaching, getting the shot from a distance. You got the engage, can't get the hammer swing into the force wall more. You're trying to solo it's out a the full tank. Four now. It is full. You got Diana coming on in from the side. Wu does get the kill down to Soaz, and here comes the ult to follow it up, but it will not finish course because he is indeed dead. You get Super Ace with the ult right down in the middle, but Maluna will go down here. Just one more shot from Diana will do it. XPK finishing up on that one. Now 3v3 here. Continuing in the top wait for three. There was everyone else. Candy Pan actually there there on the side. XPK looking for the engage, trying to get the pullback, but extinct with the orb in retreat. Curse now falling back. That is another two for one fight. They are at a pretty big disadvantage for the next few seconds. Yeah, but Angus, she's actually trying to chase down Candy Panda. Candy Panda will be able to get out of there. Uh, Fnatic, at the end, they actually had a 4v3, but they, they couldn't chase. Sivir, uh, you know, they wasn't re quite in range, didn't want to use the ultimate. They they couldn't quite follow up on it. So they're able to win the quick exchange because primarily that Maluno was out of position. Uh, they were able to pick up Kreaton as well. But um, I don't know, it, you kind of saw an issue with Fnatic's team where even if they have a lead, they couldn't quite pursue it. So they, they couldn't chase down Curse to pick up the rest of those kills. Uh, so that will allow Curse to kind of hold off, try and farm themselves back into this game. Dragon it should be coming up in just a little bit. And you see that uh, Ezreal zins out everyone. They're looking to uh, looking to gather down here in the bot lane, but you also got Soaz leading the charge. Pretty tanky at this point. He's nearly 3k health, too. He's got that phage. Could be actually working for a training force of his own, too. Going to be farming up the wave top lane with that uh, Ezreal ult will actually completely... Well... Oh, he was checking the Baron buff. So he was he, also checking that, he, too, he yeah. He didn't know where the enemy team was. They didn't have a ward up in the Baron pit yet. And actually, Sona was trying to drop a ward. So the, uh, the Ezreal ult, it got them vision of Baron, but also protected Sona. But Maluno caught out. So as right on front does get the tail of that taunt, XPK looking to 1v2 the rest of the team, but so is still trying to control the fight, getting taunts wherever he can. Sona all getting three members of Fnatic. He got Shen. He will be going down to XPK. Looking to snipe in whoever he can. Zyra ult, the second heart, the pop-up will not be grabbing anyone. Does get the snare on to Ezreal. This could be bad. Does shift out of there. Shields also going down. XPK, can you connect with anyone else? No, you cannot. Yeah, so both teams kiting pretty effectively. Curse kind of low, but once again, Fnatic can't follow up, and Fnatic does lose Soaz in the meantime. So yes. it's a nice, quick little win for Curse uh, that's slowly pulling them back into this game. But um, I don't know, we'll, we'll see how Fnatic is going to try and pressure this because they, they have the advantage. They know that, you know, Shen and Udyr, they are going to drop off a little bit uh, compared with Curse's lineup. Though it, yeah. it might be the case that, you know, Shen and Udyr, even if the damage isn't there, they'll just become too tanky for Curse to take down. So that, yeah. that is kind of something that Curse has to worry about because Orianna, uh, she's very strong in fights, but she doesn't scale well against tanky champions. But um, did, She doesn't yeah. have enough damage. But uh, it, it worked out pretty well for them, though. They're able to kite, they're actually able yeah. to navigate that fight pretty convincingly. When you have actually your tank, the first one to go down in a fight, actually the only one to go down in a fight, you have to you have to worry a little bit as to how yep. how much your tank can actually tank going on later into the game. And you see here, I mean, he's actually going for starting to go into like a damage build. He's actually going for that Trinity. Yeah, well, he wants the mobility to make sure that he's still you know strong in fights. He does he doesn't want them to be able to ignore him. Mm -hmm. um, you know, him going down, it was more about positioning. The fact that his team wasn't quite uh, you know set up to have a hard engage, so that that's not really you know that much of a call onto how tanky he is at this point. Um, though you know it does bring into mind those kind of questions. But uh, I don't. Know, we'll kind of see. Uh, what Fnatic's can try and do. XPK, he is pushing down the bottom lane, but it's actually opening up more opportunities for Maluno to continue to farm. And that's yeah. something we've seen repeatedly, that Maluno, he is splitting off. He's trying to get his farm uh, so he can be really strong in the late game. But you also know, yeah, so as he's split pushing also, but you know, Shen, he's, he's got the better kit for the split push, a little bit more than Diana. Granted, Diana is mobile, 
but you know Shen, he can just re he just join that yeah. fight whenever he needs to with that the, ultimate. The only concern is if someone's split pushing and they don't have an ultimate, you usually think, oh well, their team's going to be weaker. We can force a four v five, or we can force an yeah. objective. In this case, Fnatic kind of can't because Curse they've been kiting them pretty effectively in a lot of these situations, and unless they feel that they're strong enough to go for that Baron, um, you know it doesn't really matter where Zin is. But I, I think they could force this Baron here. They still have that Oracle's end rate is a little bit low though, so wow. that's going to hold it off uh, for a little bit. But once he gets back and heals, uh, they will have plenty of damage, particularly with the Seedlings and Sivir to take down um, the Baron if they don't grab this turret first. Guardian Angel number one being built oh, they're by they're going to lose XPK. their second turret mid, though. Oh, this could be bad. This could be bad. Balloon is starting to charge. He's looking to see what he can get, but the minion wave is here. The damage is such. Mid tier two going to be going down pretty quick, but Shen still continuing on with the push here. In top, Sivir did have to back to rejoin the rest of the team. So now it's a race. Kid and Curse actually pressure to tier three enough to take it out before Shen can do too much damage here in the top lane. The top tier two for Curse is still in mint condition, but not for a long. Ezreal ult coming on in, looking to clear the wave. So he's going to have to back off that tower a little bit quicker than usual, but it is now at half health. Oh, they are trying to surround them, though. So we'll see if so Fnatic can chase in because Orianna is actually out of position. They will see Orianna in this ward down here if Diana can close the gap. XPK is trying to get in. He gets the nice. flash ultimate into Extinct, and that is a huge disadvantage for Curse. Extinct uh, getting caught out of position. That's uh, I, I believe that's called a ninja bait. <laughs> like everyone's, we'll, we'll call it that. everyone's going to try and grab that ninja. I was going to call it something else, but I won't, I won't say what. <laughs> yeah, everyone's going for the ninja, and then you forget, all right, that guy can vanish. He can go elsewhere. And now Fnatic, seeing that they are currently in a 5v4, are they going to go try and rush this Baron? Oh, they, they can are. take him very safely. Both Uder and Shen can tank, while the seedlings from Zyra will be able to kill it. So it's a very safe Baron. The only concern is that they don't lose the 4v5, because it should be in their advantage. But Candy Panda is already getting very low. XPK looking for the dash. Wanted the pullback, not getting a hold on that. And rated with the ultimate. Only going to be popping up Maluna on that one. 2,000 on Baron. They're going to be able to get it. low. Jay's coming up with the shots. Could not get it. Sono coming in, but no. Udyr will finish off the Baron. So is out in front. They're taking quite a bit of damage. Is still ignited. Maluna for good for the pop-up, but no. Anguish will go down also. That is four members of Curse down. And Creighton will be the last one. That is a full-on ace. You didn't even... Well, Shen, he was there too. And rated. Getting very low too. Fantastic. Huge fight for Fnatic. They are now nearly... 10k up on Curse. Things are looking bad. Well, it was beautiful play, play by Fnatic because they knew that they could win the 4v5 even without oh. the ultimates. XPK once again diving on the Extinct. Can't quite get him. But they will be able to zone him off of the turret here. Uh, so it started off Zyra just using the ultimate for pure zoning and actually was able to uh, clear the entire wave. XPK, I think they're going to get it this time. Wow. They pick up the kill very quickly. This is probably Ult. going to be an inhibitor for them. Yeah. But uh, for the previous Baron fight, Zyra used the ultimate just to zone them. And then when they came in to try for the steal at the last second, Shen, he went in for the quick taunt. He hit three people with his taunt and completely prevented any possibility of a Baron steal. Yep. And so really quickly, Fnatic, they take a commanding lead. And that's what they needed. For a long time, they had a slight lead. But Curse was playing beautifully. They were kiting them effectively. They were picking off kills. And Fnatic couldn't quite uh, take the stranglehold on the game that they wanted to. And also great positioning from Fnatic too. Jace shot, it collides with the first thing comes in with, and you yeah. saw him try and go for that steal. He saw Baron was low, but he's like, hey, everyone, it's, it's you know, every, everyone get right in front of the goal line. We need to block this shot, and they did so. Udir picking up the Baron kill, and now all of Fnatic is looking real, very, very healthy. Everybody's got their Baron buff, except for Soaz. He's going to be missing out on that, but that's okay. Oh, God. Udir is going to be almost unkillable for Curse because, uh, he, I mean, they have a lot of physical damage, but magic damage is a little bit lacking. Orianna has some nice damage, but not against someone as tanky as he is. And having both the Randuins and the Frozen Heart just completely shuts down any sort of physical damage. You know, the attack speed debuffs are just massive. 305 armor on that Udir, you cannot crack that shell, no matter how hard you try, unless you manage to just isolate him from the rest of the team, which, let's face it, at this point in the game, is 30, it's that one of the 37th minute. That's nearly not gonna happen. So as if anyone's gonna be the only one isolated from the rest of the team, and as we saw before, he can just teleport on in, ult to the rest of his team, and then try and get someone off guard. Candy Panda grabbing the red buff. Everyone's just looking to clear off all the objectives, pick a lane, start pushing out Udir and Sivir up their top lane. Diana's gonna rejoin them. So it looks like Fnatic's looking to push the top, split on the bottom, and all of Curse is here, trying to find a ninja. 
Oh, but Fnatic, they're going to be able to push down they the can. top. So Curse, they're out of position. And uh, Fnatic's going to get some quick towers. XPK tanking the turret straight up, waiting for the rest of the minion wave. And that's it. All the damage that Soas put on that uh, all that tower earlier is now finished the job. The rest of the wave coming on in. And uh, Fnatic's looking to aggress on the top tier three. You have the full-on defense from Curse. All five members are here defending the top lane. And now you got Shed. Soas doing his own thing splitting down in the bot lane and this is what's going to be happening here for more than likely the rest of the game and they essentially have three lanes push because they already had the inhibitors so the super minions are split pushing the third lane yeah and uh this is bad know, it's it's, it's going to be really difficult for curse to be able to hold off yeah they can and they when you they, have a lane with super minions pushing you cannot defend one lane forever eventually your past mistakes will catch up to you so as taking down the bot tier two and Curse cannot get their engage here either. They're just in such a bad spot. Yeah, they do have some nice AOE clearing that can try and take out some of these turrets, but uh, the concern is when Fnatic decides to get a little bit more anxious yeah, and so go for up. a tower dive or just tank up the turret, they're going to be able to drop this very quickly, and Anguish is trying to counter it out. Sivir ult with the movement speed. Sona ult only grabbing sign, but that's okay. XPK with the pullback move very low. Super is very low, but there's all the damage that you need. So as coming on in, grabbing the kill on the Mulu is okay. The ninja goes down. He didn't have the Baron buff. It's fine. XPK looking for more damage, getting the burst down. He's still got the GA up and available also has died, but look at the rest of the team. They're not too far behind and raid. Candy Pan is also very weak, but XPK looking for the dash. Ezreal needs to try and kite the best he can. Fnatic raided and raided getting the kill on there. Angish had a GA of his own, but there is all the damage from the plants. Gonna keep him slowed, but no follow-up on that. They're more than happy to just take away that GA proc, but look, top tier three from the minion pressure is too much to handle. Yeah, they're almost going to lose bot as well. Candy Panda, I think he's actually going to maybe go in for it. No, he's actually recalling. I, I thought that because it was only there were only two members of Curse uh, still left, he might be able to go in for it. The only concern is that he gets picked off by Jace. But while if he saw Jace up near the top or if he knew that he was going to heal, he could maybe uh, try and you know take that turret. But this is a safe play. It allows them to go back and yep. you know get their items. Um, and so you, you kind of saw Curse, they are in a situation. It was a no-win situation, so they needed to force a fight really quickly before Shen could do any damage. Damage. It actually worked out pretty well for them. They did lose a turret up top, um, so they're they're in a dangerous situation still. But they were at least able to not outright lose. They were able to almost win the fight. Cyanide buying yet another chain vest. That's going to be into a GA. So as finish his GA, you still got a few more minutes. You still get about three minutes, a little bit more, three and a half, four minutes for both uh, XPK and Angish for their procs to actually come back up but uh, you still have one more revive here. You got it on the Shen. It's more than enough. XPK laying in wait just to see if anyone comes out to try and push that creep wave. You also got Ezreal throwing down the ultimate just to buy a little bit more time in bot, but uh, when you have someone who pushes so well like Sivir here in the top lane, that inhibitor is gonna be threatened imminently. Yeah, it will be very difficult for them to stop this push now, particularly if Jace is staying in the bottom lane to try and counter off Shen, but um, we'll see You know how they can do it end rated actually getting some nice harass over the wall but uh, it is going to be dangerous the mid inhibitor is up so it will be kind of key Fnatic, they're going to want to time their push for when that last super minion is coming in because curse is going to want to kill it out because they don't want to lose their inhibitor just to a minion push Fnatic just actually wandering on in they're just going to get some damage onto the, the uh, top inhib it is down to about half health cyanide taking some damage from lunu but ezreal trying to also get in trying to fear a few mystic shots here and there does it take off the Banshee's shield from Sivir? And Jace is actually currently chasing Shen to make sure he doesn't get the ultimate. Dun, dun, They're not dun, really dun. doing anything. He just doesn't <laughs> want to allow him to ult. Dun, 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 just running around in the jungle. Oh, he just lost him. <laughs> <laughs> XPK looking for more damage here on the top and hit. Cut. There's the engage and the pullback. XPK gets chunked out very low. Soto coming in. There's a shutdown. Oriana grabbing the kill down onto Diana. His cyanide, though, is here. Angish looking to defend the hammer backwards, flashing out, forcing out from Udir. Has to retreat off that one. There comes the Brewing Blade in retreat, and Fnatic has successfully been deflected that from was, Curse's base, but Baron is up. That was really impressive play from Angus. And uh, he actually, he went down bot, which you would think is in Shen's favor. It's in, yeah. I mean, it should be in Soaz's favor. But then he chased Soaz the entire length of the jungle. They actually went up uh, to the river and looped back around until finally uh, Angus was in, in, such, in position where he could uh, engage a 5v4 and Shen was out of position. So and, he was able to get them in the perfect spot. And without Diana, Curse can uh, actually pressured his Baron 
pretty well. They still have a while until Diana actually comes back into the, the fight, but the rest of the team is too busy defending the pushes. Angus actually grabbing the blue buff here too, but you also still have Zyra plants in the pit, and that's so interesting to me, the fact that the plant is still there attacking the Baron. That kind of just, it amuses me, it does. Oh, Curse, they're actually going in for the hard engage. It's a 5v4 in their advantage. If they can get this Baron, that would be huge. XPK has respawned. It's a race to get back in here, down to 3k help the Baron. You got the Sonal coming on in. Udir will actually fall down. You got the Zyro popping. Most of Curse so is going to be reviving. In the middle of the team will be Trap, but will he go down? Yes, Jay's getting the double kill down onto the Shen. Baron is still throwing down damage on the Curse, though. It has redone a little bit, and there comes XPK to clean up the rest of the fight. Shut down. Ezreal grabbing the Silver Kill, but there's Diana with a little bit more damage. You got the Zonia's end rated popping that, but will be shut down immediately coming from Jace. And there's one more kill, and that is it. That is the ace. They for can't get Curse. the Baron, though. They're too low. Super Ace is going to try and tank this. I don't think they have what it takes, though. It's going to be very, very close. This is down to the wire. I can't believe Curse is almost going to bring this back, though. And it's it's been some really nice play from Curse to take the advantage away from Fnatic. If Fnatic didn't know how to pressure it, they are getting this wow. Baron very easily, as Jace actually had enough uh, regen. They had enough uh, shielding from Orianna. But that is that's massive. Fnatic from a moment ago where you know it seemed like they had this game completely on lockdown it started off with Angus shutting down Jace in the previous fight so instead of a 5v4 in Shen's favor it was a 5v4 in Jace's favor and then they were able to pressure the Baron and uh, win that fight once again with the with the advantage and Jeez. Um, I, really cool play and again I think it all kind of boils down to the fact that Curse has a little bit more mobility in fights uh, they're able to, they have a lot of physical damage, but they're able to move in and out of fights, pick and choose kind of where they want to fight a little bit more than Fnatic can. Yep. And, you know, you saw too, you know, XPK did join the fight late. He had to run with toast in his mouth, trying to get back to the fight. He's like, everyone's at Baron. I'm late. I'm late. I need to get there soon. And that, you know, that, that was a nice little advantage for Curse to have going into that also. But this is now Baron buff on Curse. They are still in defense mode. They still have uh, a lot of pushes to defend against, but all three of their inhibitors are back up. Are there any more super minions pushing? I do not not believe no, that there, there are. are. Wow. So we got we got some time here. But however, the GA has come back up for XPK Super A's. Looking for just to slow on the Soez. It'll be fine. GA actually has come back up on to Angish also. So he's going to be a huge contributing factor for these next few minutes while the Baron buff is still up and ready to and go. This is at the point where it's kind of a concern that Fnatic might not have enough damage. So Curse, they're just yep. being really aggressive here. Even though Cyanide and Soez are almost unkillable, uh, XPK on Diana, he's got single target burst damage, but not a lot of AOE, so they're missing out on you know a lot of magic damage, and really a lot most of their damage comes from Sivir. Two and a half minutes left on the Baron buff, so Curse needs to make the best of it, and there's the engage. Sinai being caught behind, Sonal coming on in too, getting three members of Fnatic. You got the Zin ult pushing members back, and Ezreal getting the kill down on a Sivir. XPK looking out of a desperation to try and get something Curse from Ezreal, this. but Curse will be able to surround her, get the kill, and now the mid inhibitor is actually falling for Fnatic. They can continue this push here. They got the Baron buff. They have the regen. They might as well. You got the Nexus turrets now going down. Plenty of damage from Alunus Soaz. In desperation, they want the kill on the Ezreal, but they just cannot do it. Zyra cannot clear the gap. N-rated going to be reviving in the middle of the team. She will also be screwed. On the revive, there's the double kill coming in from Orianna. The ultimate, the, the passive from Zyra will finally get the kill, but that is too much. That is too little too late. The Nexus goes down. Curse! With the comeback, taking game number one. I, I can't believe that I, they were able to make, make turn that game around. Wow. That was absolutely brutal for Fnatic, but really nice job from Curse. And it's actually interesting. The the Zin pick, I was kind of questioning it. I you know I, I was kind of wondering whether or not the Malphite would have been stronger, like you had suggested. Um, because Zin, he's not very strong early on in the game. He has really strong early ganks, but mid-game, he's very weak. And we saw that a lot of times. Yeah. Curse wasn't strong enough to fight, but the kiting that they had, the pushing that they had, it was able to counter off Fnatic just long enough. And then Zin was kind of this you know beefy body up front. He kind of worked out well for him because of the quick engage that he has with uh, Orianna as well. Mm -hmm. um, that kind of worked in their favor. But you know, for them to be able to turn around that game is really astounding. And I, I again, I, you know, it's, it's great play all around, but yeah. To me, it really comes down to extinct. Or, I mean, sorry, Angus. Angus, you know, played uh, a really nice, did a really nice job on Jace. Jace is just such a strong champion overall. This is why but you I, ban Jace. I still <laughs> am just, you know, 
keep on going back. I'm like mind blown. The one fight where Shen was down in the bottom lane and Jace chases him around until, yeah. you know, he keeps chasing until <laughs> he's in a situation <laughs> where he's actually at the fight and Shen isn't, which doesn't even make any sense. I Shen should be the one that's winning that split push advantage, but yeah. Jace actually won it because of the way that Angus played. Get uh, get out your vinyls of Yakety Sax. Go watch that. Play it. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. And I'm just, I'm, I'm so happy too that uh, Maluna was actually able to come back he seemed behind yeah. from moment one, and he managed to actually still be relevant in these fights. He got those GP10s. He got his income. He got what he needed. Still comes in fantastic, fantastic work from Curse, but that is still yet only game number one. We're going to be going into game number two shortly. If Curse wins this next game, they will be grabbing the last qualifier spot for EU for IPL5, and we will see if they're going to be able to do it. Fnatic Ray Call versus Curse EU game number two. IPL 5 EU qualifier number four. We'll be right back.